Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today, we will be learning Design Thinking full course. In this full course, we will learn everything about Design Thinking in detail. We will begin this video with what Design Thinking is. Then we will look into Design Thinking process in detail. Next, we will see what Docker steps are and what is Empathy Mapping. Finally, we will conclude this video by combining Design Thinking and Agile techniques. By the end of this video, I can assure you that all your Docker career related queries would have been answered. For this training with me, I have our experienced design thinking experts Ravi, Shruti and Chinmayi. Together, we will take you through the various topics of design thinking. So, let's get started with our exciting video on design thinking full course. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today we will be talking about design thinking. But before that, let me tell you guys a few facts. Based on the growth of job offerings in the year 2021, LinkedIn confirms that the top in-demand technical skills are Web Development (SEO), Design Thinking (UX Testing) and Data Visualization. Not just that, according to ZipRecruiter, the majority of design thinking consultant employees currently earn between 41,500 to 119,500 American dollars per annum, with top earners making 166,000 American dollars annually across the United States. Today, in this session, we will discuss what exactly is design thinking, design thinking use case, why is design thinking important, the five phases of design thinking and the four pillars of design thinking. Now, let's jump into the major question. What is design thinking and how is it helpful? Let me explain to you in a very simple way. Design thinking is extremely helpful in solving problems that are ill-defined or unknown. Design thinking is an iterative method that helps resolve user issues or redefines problems in alternative strategies and solutions that might not be instantly apparent with our initial level of understanding. Some of the famous companies using design thinking are PepsiCo, Braun, Bank of America, Bank of Ireland, GE Healthcare, Stanford Health, and many more. Let us focus on PepsiCo here. As everybody knows, PepsiCo Incorporation is an American multinational company which supplies food and beverages. Now, PepsiCo is using the approach of design thinking. But why did PepsiCo choose design thinking? And what are the changes it experienced? Did you know PepsiCo's sales rate increased when the company started addressing consumer needs? With the help of design thinking, the company communicated with customers and solved problems by collaborating with the teams and using innovative thinking. The company empathized with users to design successful processes, products and services. The company saw profit with effective business strategies and innovations. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. Getting an idea of what clients require from each of the products, such as vending machines and good user experience, helped PepsiCo stay on top of the market. At the same time, design thinking is a very effective approach to solve business problems. The three major components of design thinking are technological possibilities, business success, and user needs. Here comes the important question. Why design thinking is important? To answer this question, we have come up with six answers. Design thinking solves problems using human-centric techniques. It is an iterative process. It understands user challenges and redefines problems. Next, it promotes a solution-based approach. Then it helps develop empathy with the target user. The last advantage is, it promotes adopting a hands-on approach to prototyping and testing. The design thinking process is widely used in industries and was created by the Stanford D School. It consists of five steps for creative problem solving. The five phases of design thinking are on the screen. First comes empathize. Empathize with users to get a better understanding of the problem. Next comes define. 
note and document the information you find in the emphasize phase to identify the exact problem you should work on. Next is ideate. Strategize solutions for the problem identified in the defined phase. Next is prototype. Create a prototype of the design solution that you finalized in the ideate phase. And the final process is to test. Test the design solution. Since design thinking is an iterative process, you can redefine the solution based on the test results. Let me give you an important information. Always remember that the five phases, stages or modes are not always sequential. This process do not follow any specific order and can be applied once or can be repeated iteratively. Ensure you do not follow the phases as an hierarchical or step-by-step -step process. Moving on to the next topic, let's see what are the four important pillars of design thinking. So, the four important pillars of the design thinking. The first one is understand by asking the user's need. The second one is explore by finding patterns. Third one is prototype by making tangible. The fourth and the last one is evaluate by always iterating. The famous Steve Jobs once said, design is not just what it looks like, it is how it works. Let me explain you this with a small example. TV remote control. There has always been an evolution in remote controls. Earlier, people used universal remotes. The major disadvantage of universal remote is the complexity. The remote had a lot of buttons, which made an individual difficult to understand. Then came smart remotes. Managing the physical keys of the remote control device is not easy. But with smart remotes, users had only the major keys, which was easy to operate. An individual does not have to depend on the remote completely like in earlier days. Not just that, a smart remote can be operated via mobile phones as well. Isn't that simple and creating? Of course it is. This evolution was done with the help of design thinking. The design thinking process serves as a strong foundation to formulate reliable strategies that result in good products. Now, we have come to the end of this video on design thinking. Hi everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today, we will be discussing the design thinking process. Have you ever come across the term design-led business? So what exactly is a design-led business anyway? According to skyward.com, Adobe is one in a many and a best-in-class example for design-led company. Companies that put design at a very core of their brand are design-led. They weave design process into everything they do. From research and strategy to creating content, they think beyond transactions and focus on beautiful experiences that build lasting and meaningful relationships with customers. Isn't that wonderful? Indeed it is. Some of the stats that's trending these days are on the screen. According to Design Management Institute, the performance of design-driven companies are outstanding and has S&P index or stock marketing index by 219% over 10 years. And second, we found another source from Passes New School. The team confirms that 75% of the organizations have accepted that they are engaged in design thinking. In today's session, we will discuss what is design thinking and design thinking process in detail. We will also understand the concept of design thinking with an example. So without further ado, let's jump into the major question, what is design thinking and how is it helpful? Let me explain to you in a very simple way. Design thinking is becoming an increasingly popular approach for organizations to solve problems. Design thinking manages to solve problems at its source. Now, let's understand design thinking with a class example. The problem statement is, how would you redesign a classroom to meet student needs? Or, how would you redesign a classroom to meet students' needs? Miss Monica is the class teacher for first grade and she decided to set up a comfortable semi-private classroom setting. After discussing with the students and implementation of design thinking, she got a good result such as students like to stay in the class, 
The students showed good improvement in terms of interaction with the teacher. They could move freely in the classroom. They showed more interest in learning inside the classroom. Isn't that great? Of course it is. Here comes the important topic. Design thinking process. The design thinking process is widely used in industries and was created by Stanford D School. The design thinking process involves the concept of empathy, define, ideate, prototype and test. Always remember that the five phases, stages or modes are not always sequential. The process do not follow any specific order or can be applied once or can be repeated iteratively. Now it's time to examine how design thinking principles can assist us holistically in order to solve challenges. The first point, empathy. First comes empathize. Here you should perform research and analyze to know the current DEI state. Here DEI stands for diversity, equity and inclusion. A good design idea comes through a continuous focus on human-centric ideas. Design thinking not only encourages us to gain DEI solutions but also eliminates barriers for professionals who are aiming to achieve their career aspirations with fair and good opportunities. Design thinking begins with empathy and the objective of empathy state is to focus on the users. In this stage, it is important to focus on in-depth metrics like prediction and perspective analysis. These metrics help an individual to cross-verify the insights collected from our associates. The result of the empathy refuels our strategy process and program with innovative solutions. A quick summary for this phase is displayed on the screen. First comes interview, which means understand the user's need. Next, seek to understand the requirement and finally, ensure that you are non-judgmental. Next comes define. The objective of the second phase of design thinking is the define stage and this includes asking the right question. An individual should focus on asking the right issues. Next, he should know how to tackle an issue. Then, he should know how to motivate others with wise words. The understanding we gain from the empathize phase encourages us to reframe the perceived problem and gain perspectives. This process helps us to allow a more holistic look at the path towards the expected solution. If we plan the previous phase properly, this stage will not take much time. While defining the problem, we should ensure that every associate follows the problem solving process correctly. This phase helps us to build with the most authentic solutions. The quick summary for this phase is on the screen. Role objectives, decisions, challenges. Moving on to the next stage, we will talk about the ideate phase. The objective of this stage is to accept different perspectives in order to solve the issues. Also, we strategize solutions for the problems identified in the defined phase. In this phase, we should address divergent styles of thinking. We should be able to uncover more possibilities and accept maximum ideation. Later, we should consider convergent styles of thinking to manage an overall process and purpose. In this stage, we isolate solution streams and later merge and refine insights. A quick summary of this phase is displayed on the screen. Sharing ideas and prioritizing the ideas based on requirements. The next step is to create a prototype. Create a prototype of the design solution that you finalized in the ideate phase. Prototypes are advanced, mid to high fidelity wireframes with more visual details and interactions between elements of the design. Here comes the important question. What is the purpose of a prototype? So the answer is prototypes show how something works. They depict functionality that may not easily be seen from a mock-up. They are useful for user testing. They are ideal for quick internal use and client feedback. A quick summary for this phase is on the screen. First is user testing. Next is quick iteration. The final step is testing. Testing can also be deployed on a live website or application. 
different designs are sent to different users and the performance or usability is tested for each version. The design version that is found to be the most desired and usable is finalized. There are usability testing tools for optimizing the user experience in websites. Various tests can be run on a website with predefined user base. Now, let me tell you the tips for writing a user report. First comes details. Here, you have to give complete details of the test you performed. Next is clear. All information in the test report should be concise and clear to understand. Next comes specific. Do not elaborate on project tasks. Outline test outcomes and focus only on primary concerns. Then it's standard. Test reports should follow the standard template. This ensures consistency in all test reports. A quick summary of this phase is on the screen. First is understanding impediments. Next, we should know what solution works for the phase. Then comes validating and correcting the errors. In a design thinking process, a lot of people must be wondering what is the goal of a design thinking process? Well, it's simple. The goal is to solve complex problems from a human perspective. The design thinking process focuses on creativity, innovation and user centricity, helping you to come up with actionable solutions that are desirable for the user, viable for business and technologically feasible. That was all about the process of design thinking. The design thinking process serves as a strong foundation to formulate reliable strategies that result in good products. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. Some of the famous companies using design thinking are PepsiCo, Braun, Bank of America, Bank of Ireland, GE Healthcare, Stanford Health, and many more. Based on the growth of job offerings in 2021, LinkedIn confirms that the top in-demand technical skills are web development, SEO, and design thinking. Today, in this session, we will discuss what exactly is design thinking and the five steps of design thinking with suitable examples. And in the end, we will have a look at a case study of Uber Eats. Now, let's jump into the major question. What is design thinking? What is design thinking and how is it helpful? Let me explain to you in a very simple way. Design thinking is extremely helpful in solving problems that are ill-defined or unknown. Design thinking is an iterative method that helps resolve user issues or redefines problems with the best solutions. Let's have a look at the example of design thinking here. As you can see on the right hand side, the Heinz company came up with a unique and beautiful ketchup bottle design earlier. But they received complaints from users like when the bottle is close to empty, the ketchup gets stuck at the bottom. To solve the issue, the company came up with a solution. The new upside down bottle was very easy to use and had no issues of wastage. Now let's talk about the design thinking process steps. These are the five steps that are essential for the design thinking process. Empathize, define, ideate, prototype and testing. Let's talk about empathize first. The initial step to follow in the design thinking process is to pay attention to the client's requirements. A user or its team should consider the user requirements. In short, they should step into their shoes and try to find a solution to their problems in the best way possible. The initial step here is to research the user's needs in order to get success in the entire process. Here, for user research, the designer should collect more details about the problem. Along with that, he should also note down the solutions that users have already tried. Knowing what solution did not work for the users helps the designers understand what solutions don't work and it also helps them prevent from repeating the same solution. Asking the right questions to the user is essential. So in this stage, it is important to gather all the necessary details related to the user in order to find a suitable solution that will meet his needs and expectations. In short, it's necessary to know how the user feels while interacting with a certain app or product. For example, some of the common questions in this stage are, is the user comfortable in using the Zomato app? Does he like the user interface? 
What are the challenges he is facing while ordering food? Does the design of the application evoke feelings of frustration? What emotions does the user go through when navigating this app? In this case, designers should hear the complaints and create products that satisfy the user and make their lives easier. Without the empathy stage, the design process lacks all important user-centric quality which helps the designer reach the success stage rather than failing. The next step of the design thinking process focuses everything on defining a problem. Every detail is collected from the research performed in the empathy stage. Some of the highlights in the stage are What problems and bottlenecks are users coming up against? What is the major user problem that requires to be solved? The defined stage will encourage the team to gather useful techniques in order to solve challenges with the least difficulty. Let's have a look at the example for the defined stage. A common problem for mothers is managing kids alone during crucial times. Now we need to come up with ideas for mothers where they can easily and quickly pick up groceries when they have sleeping kids in the car. Now you must be wondering how can this be done? Well, this can be accomplished by collecting data, differentiating facts from opinion, consulting every piece of information and focusing on the major problems specifically, figuring out what expectation is violated, determining in which stage the problem lies. The defined phase's output helps an individual build a clear and creative idea in a human-centered manner. From this stage, an individual will start to progress to the third stage, that is the ideate stage, by asking relevant questions that will encourage a person to develop ideas or solutions. After strong research on user requirements, it is the right time to step into the next phase of the design thinking process, that is the ideate process. This phase gives priority to creativity and ideation. In this stage, the designers will be performing ideation sessions and researching for new ideas. In simple words, the phase focuses on creative and curious activities such as brainstorming activity. Let's understand the phase with the help of an example. The problem statement is right on the screen. It says, a 20-year-old boy lives in a town and has a few requirements. Every day, he wants to use a car for 30 to 40 minutes trip hardly two to three times per month. Now let us look at the insight of this problem statement. The young boy doesn't prefer to own a car as it would be too expensive for him. Instead, he wants a solution where he can share the four-wheeler with others having similar needs. Here comes the important part. For the given scenario, let's look at what could be done in the ideation phase. Ask suitable questions to the user and come up with ideas based on their needs. Brainstorm your ideas with your team members. Uncover unexpected areas of innovation. Coming back to the question, as a subject matter, I would say that the suitable answer to this question is either using Ola Share or Uber Pool. However, the ideation phase's goal is to help the designer come up with strong ideas for the users. Moving on to the next phase, let us discuss prototype. In this phase, we can experiment and modify the errors found in the product. This phase is a mini version of the product. It validates solutions and tries to resolve obstacles. This stage has two types of prototypes. One is low fidelity and the other one is medium fidelity. Talking about low fidelity, it is a prototype suitable for the early stage of the process. However, Medium fidelity is a prototype suitable for the last stage represented through storyboards. To explain this in a better way, let me give you an example. When the first version of the Apple Watch was launched in the market, that is in April 2015, it was a smaller version than the prototype model. In fact, the prototype of the Apple Watch was a full-sized iPhone with a Velcro strap attached to it. Thanks to the prototype phase, which gave another chance to the designers to come up with the better Apple Watch design. Now comes the last phase, testing. Once prototyping is done, we move to the testing phase. This stage gives importance to the user feedback based on the prototypes we have created. After your prototype is done, 
present it to your real users and get their feedback. Basically, in this stage, the user's feedback on the prototype stage is considered and improvements are made in the testing phase. These improvements help the designers redefine the original problem statement and offer new ideas and solutions. In this stage, it isn't necessary to just work on the prototype phase. The project's testing stage can often relate to the other stages in the design thinking process. Such as if you're working on creating a website and you notice a fault in the empathize stage, you need to work on it. The designer will be taken to the empathize stage and will be encouraged to understand user requirement in a better way. Next, he will be taken to the define stage and will be asked to change the way of defining problem statements. Next, he will be encouraged to come up with new solutions in the ideation stage. And finally, he will finalize a model and perform iteration in the prototype phase. Now it's time for a quick recap. Let us discuss everything in one go. In the empathize phase, get to know everything about the user for whom you are working. In the define stage, come up with the ideas based on the empathy phase's insights. Then comes the ideate phase, brainstorm and list down creative ideas. Next is prototype. Here you should finalize the designs and the final stage is testing. And here you have to test and evaluate the result. Now let's take a look at the case study. Consider an example at the Uber company where they wanted to expand their business. They wanted to find customized and affordable food rate at the tap of a button. They wanted to launch an app for food lovers to build their social community. So what did they do? How did Uber Eats become popular? Uber Eats adopted design thinking by innovative thinking where the team first gathered user requirements and collected data. The walkable program is where they physically visit locations in the city to study the food, people and culture. In short, the team focused on defining problems. The team understood the different perspectives of every user and came up with ideas. Next, they opted for order shadowing. The team tests their prototypes by watching their customers' real-world experiences. Fireside charts is where they invite delivery partners restaurant workers and clients to work upon the feedback received on the application. The design thinking process has received good response because Uber Eats now operates in over 80 cities globally and is still on the rise. We as designers are completely unaware of what our users feel or how they think. Not even an expert can say what exactly is going on in users' minds. We can only perform research observe, question and surmise and when we take the time to understand them better, we can empathize. We need someone to come up with an effective solution for the challenges we are experiencing. So what do you think could be the best solution in this case? How do our problems get resolved? Empathy plays a key role here, which uses the technique of empathy mapping. With the help of empathy mapping, you can build rich insight which helps you to figure out genuine problems or issues that your client may have right now. Hi everyone, welcome to yet another video by Simply Learn. And today we will be talking about empathy mapping in design thinking. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit Skill Up by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. In today's topic, we will be discussing what is empathy mapping, what are the four quadrants in empathy mapping, what is theming, and difference between one user and multi user empathy mapping. So what do you think empathy mapping in design thinking is? Well, visualizing a user's behavior in an empathy map helps UX teams or designers align on a deep understanding of end users. In short, an empathy map is a system to outline and imagine what a designer thinks about a specific user. The process draws out the information everyone has about the user to arrive at a common understanding of the user. Now, let's have a look at the format of empathy mapping. In design thinking, empathy maps are divided into four quadrants. The quadrants are say, think, feel, and do. Empathy maps are used to gain a 360 degree perspective on what a user says, thinks, feels, and does. Empathy maps offer a glance into who a user is as a whole and what they feel is different from what they say, think, or do. Now let's understand the four quadrants in detail. Let's first talk about the say empathy map. The quadrant contains what the client says, 
preferably it contains verbatim and direct statements from research. Next is Empathy Map Think Quadrant. The Think Quadrant emphasizes what the client thinks about their experience. It gives special consideration to what clients think but may not be eager to vocalize. Next comes the Dusk Quadrant. The Dusk Quadrant focuses on the actions that clients take. It focuses on how clients interact with the product or the website. And finally, let's talk about the Feel Quadrant. The Feel Quadrant emphasizes the consumer's mental state. This is frequently expressed using an adjective and a short sentence describing the setting. Here on the screen, you can look at the examples of the empathy map where we have separately mapped out the notes. First, sketch your users in the center and write the person's name along with their description. Now, let's talk about the quadrants. In the set quadrant, we can notice statements like, I was expecting something different, I want something reliable, what do you think? Likewise, each quadrant has a different example and these examples are different from every quadrant. Once you finalize the notes, it's time to work on the themes. Now we have the four quadrants and we know what users feel and what they do. But how can we move forward with data and what should be our next step? This is where the theming part comes in. Once we have the quadrants data, remember to divide them into categories. You now need to work through one section at a time and find themes. For example, as you can see on the screen, we have notes on the quadrants and each note focuses on the same topic but in different ways. So put them on top of each other and draw a circle around them. Themes guide you to focus on the key areas that need attention. Through this, you can look at major user problems and notice how they might map to your user journey. Or you can create problem statements that will then go on to drive personas. Considering four quadrants, you can round up the notes that are quite similar. Here, the themes with the majority of similar questions should be your target to focus on. In short, once you complete interviewing your clients and create themes, you will know what questions to focus on and what not to. Moving on to the next topics, let's see the differences between one user and multi-user empathy maps. Empathy maps can be implemented upon either one user or multiple users. Let me discuss with you in detail. An individual mapping focuses on a user interview or a user's log, such as diary study. The designer completely observes him in order to understand the user problem. Next, talking about aggregated empathy maps, it focuses on a user segment rather than focusing on a single person. Aggregated empathy is designed by combining numerous empathy maps from users who meet similar behaviors and can be grouped into one segment. The empathy design thinking process serves as a strong foundation to formulate reliable strategies that result in good products. Did you know that IDC has confirmed 30 to 35 percent of IT projects still fail? The major reason behind the failure of software development projects is due to poor communication, poor management by senior authorities, employer resistance and insufficient funding. To avoid these problems, businesses prefer customer-centric innovation techniques such as design thinking and agile methodology. These concepts have similar techniques such as gathering user feedback, following an iterative approach of the model that results in a better idea. With such benefits, designers avoid errors and result in faster and reliable output. However, these two concepts are not interchangeable. Hi, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today we'll be discussing the design thinking and agile development. Let us see how these two techniques can be implemented together. Now, without further ado, let's get started with the tutorial Design Thinking and Agile. Today we will be looking at what is design thinking, what is agile, design thinking explained, design thinking and agile. So the first topic, what is design thinking? Design thinking is extremely helpful in solving problems that are ill-defined or unknown. It is an iterative method that helps resolve user issues or redefines problems with the best solutions. Next, let us understand what is Agile. Agile is a set of methods and practices that focuses on iterative development. Also, requirements and solutions are obtained due to self-organizing cross-functional teams collaborating. 
If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. Moving further, let us understand what is design thinking in detail. Design thinking requires designers to step into their customer's shoes and try to find a solution to their problem with empathy. The process also helps resolve user issues by redefining problems and providing the best solutions. Design thinking covers five stages. They are empathy, define, ideate, prototype, and testing. Let's talk about empathy first. The initial step to follow in the design thinking process is to pay attention to the client's requirements. A designer or its team should consider the user requirements. In short, they should step into their shoes and try to find the solution to their problem in the best way possible. Without the empathy stage, the design process lacks all important user-centric quality which helps a designer reach the success stage rather than failing. Next comes the define stage. The define stage will encourage the team to gather useful techniques in order to solve challenges with the least difficulty. An individual will start to progress to the third stage. That is the ideate stage by asking relevant questions to encourage the person to develop ideas and solutions. Next is the ideate stage. This phase gives priority to creativity and ideation. In this stage, the designers will be performing ideation sessions and searching for new ideas. In simple words, the phase focuses on creative and curious activities such as brainstorming activity. Next is the prototype stage. In this phase, we can experiment and modify the errors found in the product. This phase is a mini version of the product. It validates solutions and tries to resolve obstacles. This stage has two prototypes. One is low fidelity and the other one is medium fidelity. Finally comes testing. This stage gives importance to user feedback based on the prototypes we have created. Basically, in this stage, the user's feedback on the prototype stage is considered and improvements are made. That was all about the five stages in design thinking process. Moving forward, let us see how design thinking and agile can be implemented together. While design thinking and agile are applied separately, the two strategies can be implemented together as well. A majority of IT companies have begun to utilize agile in conjunction with design thinking. Whereas Agile methodology is a practice of solving problems and design thinking is an approach to find user problems. For teams looking to leverage Agile and design thinking for the first time, here are a few recommendations to focus on. Let us see the first topic. Begin at a small level. It means focus on high value, low risk opportunities in order to earn better solutions using design thinking and Agile together. Then, with better results, take on more challenging initiatives. Next is, invest in your research. It means, ensure the entire design team understand the end user. Suppose there are any existing data, start by testing some ideas. Start the design thinking process by building a map of the user's journey. As a result, it encourages team members to focus on empathize phase and discover new solutions. Next, focus on a clearly defined problem statement with Sprint. Start design thinking in Sprint Zero. Encourage the entire team to understand the problem statement and build a useful design framework. Then, build a production team culture. Form a core design and development team. Teams such as decision makers, UX researcher, designer, visual designer, scrum master, developers, and quality analysts. Do not exceed the team to more than 10 members and make sure every professional has an equal say. Create an environment that supports collaboration across departments, like a successful design solution. Next is optimal use of design thinking. Use design thinking during the first stage of project development and then apply it whenever an important feature has to be developed. Next comes design patterns and maintain a good user experience. This stage helps in minimizing design and development time.
Design patterns work as building blocks encouraging team members to remove lower level design decisions. The patterns created should be accepted by the entire team and should be easily implemented. Finally comes periodic testing. Based on the characteristics of the project, set up a testing schedule. The time can be scheduled once in four days or once during the sprint. Test simple prototypes to eliminate errors and understand the viability of ideas during the early stages. Test the working software and evaluate the result for a better output. And with that, we have come to an end of this video on design thinking full course. I hope it was informative and interesting. If you have any questions about the topics covered in this video, please ask away in the comment section below. Our team of experts will be happy to solve all your queries. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and keep learning. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.